Hi everybody, I'm Howard and this is Otter's Corner. Today I want to talk a little bit about the Social Security Administration's financial condition. Very recently they came out with their annual audited financial statement for the year ending September 2023. As you can see, it, it, it's several hundred pages, but you know, you have their operating statement in essence and their and their balance sheet. And these are these are real numbers. These are these are numbers that a lot of people think are hidden, are a secret, nobody has access to, they're not audited. These are audited financial statements, just like a corporation would be audited. So yes, you can probably trust these numbers unless you're a conspiracy theorist thinking something's going on. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about today, today about the condition of uh, the trust funds, the condition of Social Security, and where it's headed and, and what we're looking at. I'm not going to get too bogged down into details. Like I said, it was, a, it was a several hundred page report, but I just want to hone in on just a few statistics here. And this is, this is something I've, I've talked a little bit about before, but just, just to get a little bit deeper into the weeds here, we're going to talk about the trust fund. The trust fund exists. The trust fund consists entirely of treasury securities. As we said before, the government is required by law to replace the funds in the trust with treasury securities. These are, in essence, IOUs, or just bills, bonds, notes, whatever you want to call them. Just like you or I might buy in our brokerage account, we can go out and buy treasuries. You know, most, many corporations buy treasuries, insurance companies, pension funds, foreign governments, uh, the Fed. You know, they all hold treasuries, and just like those treasuries, Social Security holds treasuries, the, the Social Security Administration. So here's the interesting thing. You know, we all talk, we all, we all hear about how the trust fund's running out of money. In 10 years, they're going to have to cut benefits because there's no more money left. But th the point I want to show here today is how slowly that's happening right now. So as of the end of September, there were $2.8 trillion in the trust fund. And the last year there was $2.8 trillion. There's about a $22 billion, $22 billion difference. Very small difference considering the size of this trust fund. That's money, that's money that's going to be spent as more people retire over the coming years. And you see, that's a very small drop in one year. Well, at that rate, how's it fall to zero in 10 years? And that that's highlights the problem, which is the number of people that are going to retire and start taking benefits over the next nine to 10 years, and that will deplete the trust fund because there aren't enough new employees paying payroll taxes into the trust to overcome that mountain of bills that the Social Security Administration is gonna have. So here's a little bit more about what happened during the year. OASI, those are your retirement benefits. Those are the benefits paid to retirees. It was $1.2 trillion or $100 billion a month. So when you hear things about, you know, people saying, gee, if the government just didn't give $100 billion to, you know, the war effort in Ukraine, they could fund the trust fund forever. Or, you know, it, it, would, it would go a long way towards helping the trust fund. Two things, again, as we've talked about before, it's illegal for the government to put that money in the trust fund. They're not allowed to fund Social Security. But even if they could, let's say they took that $100 billion, instead of giving it to Ukraine, they gave it to the trust fund. It would pay one month, one month roughly of benefits. That's it. It's, it's not a huge amount of money that's going to foreign aid when you compare it to a massive program like Social Security. So again, $1.2 trillion versus one point, almost $1 trillion last year. And that difference is due mainly to the COLA increase, the cost of living adjustment that everyone got, the 8.7% increase for 2023 is mostly reflected in there. There are more people collecting benefits, so that's part of it also. But a big part of that was the COLA increase. Now you have uh, disability income, disability benefits. And this, is, this, this shows the comparison. It's a very small part of the program. It's a lot of money, $155 billion in 23 and $146 billion in 22. And again, most of that difference is made up from the COLA increase. But, you know, when you compare it, it's, it's you know, seven, eight times smaller than the retirement benefits. So, you know, we can talk about disability later. It's really not anything to do with retirement. I don't want to get bogged down in things that aren't associated with retirement, but it is, it is part of the Social Security Trust, and they do pay uh, money out of there. 
So in order to make these payments, money comes into the trust through payroll taxes. Three, three things come into the, the trust. The payroll taxes where employees pay 6.2% and your employer pays 6.2%. And then there's interest on the securities held in the trust. Remember, those are Treasury securities, and the Treasury pays the Social Security Administration interest on those holdings, just like they pay interest if we held Treasuries or any other company held Treasuries or any other government held Treasuries. They pay interest. That total about $67 billion in both years. And then there's also you know, $40 to $50 billion in income tax revenue on Social Security benefits. As you know, you may be subject to taxes on your benefits if you hit certain income thresholds. You may have to pay taxes on 50% of your benefit or 85% of your benefit. All those income taxes that are paid on Social Security don't go to the general fund of the government. They go right back to the Social Security Administration. So these are the revenues. So $1.28 trillion versus $1.15 trillion. And most of this increase can be attributed to more people working. And that's, that's counter to a lot of arguments you hear about the trust is running out of money because fewer people are working. That is not true. There's more people working now than ever before. There's more people paying taxes in than ever before. And there's more tax revenue coming in ever, than ever before. And again, this highlights the problem. There's too many people retiring versus new people coming in and paying taxes. It takes about three people right now to pay the taxes, two and a half maybe two and a half people, for new employees for every new retiree. So you have to have a lot of new employees when you consider about 10,000 people a day are retiring and starting benefits. So now let's look at the net change. And there's some other, there's some other categories here. There's some administrative stuff and some expenses I didn't include here. But overall, the net change, in, in, and you can call this an operating loss if you want, so they lost $39 billion when you compare the revenues to what they had to pay out in, benef in the various benefits. So where did that $39 billion come from? That came from the trust fund. So it's a very small decrease. And again, you know, these, these numbers aren't going to add up exactly because there's some other items I didn't include in here, some small insignificant items. But the point is, you know, it went down by $32 billion last year, $39 billion in 2023. That's a very small change. It's going to increase, it's going to increase rapidly. That's the problem that has to be solved by Congress. Whenever they get around to it, whenever they can agree on something, that's what we're looking at. So this was just a brief look at what's going on with Social Security. These are audited financial statements. These are real numbers. Everything exists here. There are no conspiracy theories going on. This is what reality looks like. So. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you have any comments, let me know in the comments. Please subscribe. Please like. Please share. And we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.